when Greystone first came out, he was classified as a fighter and a carry. It was really nebulous for quite some time. What exactly what kind of a hero was he supposed to be? As he had two lives, but scaled kind of like a carry, but was kind of neither. What is Greystone? What is his deal? And in this video, we're taking a particular approach to him and reworking his kit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Hero Rework video. I am Stilfin. A couple things right off the bat. This in no way represents what Unleashed Games is doing. It is simply my own personal idea, and that is that. Two, hero passives are coming back, so we have to extract that passive out of their kits and kind of see what fits their role, their purpose, and their identity. Three, I like the idea of what I'm calling a paragon mechanic. If you can do something that usually represents what the hero does well, their whole purpose, their main ability sort of thing, then you get rewarded and that aspect of their kit gets empowered to make you better capable of uh, doing what they do best. Three, I believe that hero design has to be based around strong gameplay niches, strong gameplay reasons for those heroes to exist, or else there's no point in having multiple heroes all doing different things with different purposes. You need diversity in the hero roster in order to have compelling gameplay choices, compelling draft lobbies, etc, etc. So, with that said, what is Greystone? What the heck is he supposed to be? I, b I believe that a carry with two lives Sounds pretty scary and pretty hard to balance, especially with with some some crazy crazy itemization options and stuff like that. And that's just not him. To me, he's always best. He's always been the ultimate bruiser. He literally has two lives, is a melee hero, and just hacks and slashes. He's the ultimate bruiser. Gets in your face. Doesn't care. He can die. He can die again. And he still fits his purpose. Like, he's been the ultimate bruiser. So, I ran with that theme for him and built on his anti-basic attack theme. The fact that he can block things with his shield, block instances of basic attack damage. So, essentially, I've made Greystone the ultimate carry harass the ultimate hero that either dives on a basic attack assassin that's that's that also works of course but also add heavy heavy basic attack fighters too but mostly carries basic attack carries adcs he jumps on them he, he just doesn't care he's just there hacking and slashing taking up their you know their attention so that the rest of his team can just slaughter everybody in sight that's him. He gets in there. He doesn't care. He hacks and slashes, absorbs basic attacks or basic attack damage. And he that's that is Greystone. I've run with that theme. He's the carry diver, anti basic attack, mobile bruiser because of his fantastic assault the gates. So what is his passive? And that is his anti basic attack nature every seven six five four seconds and those numbers forget all the numbers in here guys just get the purpose the theme the impression of what all of this is trying to to, to say to you forget the numbers every once in a while graystone uses his shield to deflect the next instance of basic damage every instance of basic damage that he doesn't block against graystone reduces this cooldown by 0.2 seconds or by some amount so that if you are attacking him more very rapidly well you're just kind of you're 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 accelerating your own demise him against a twin blast who's very rapid fire well he's pretty much the perfect hard counter to 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 a twin blast if he does indeed fire rapidly or a more slow basic attack carry maybe a less of a hard counter stuff like that so that is his passive really suits him well and that's Greystone, man. Just absorbing shots, blocking shots. Really nice. Makeway is his Q ability. It says AoE. Gives him a little bit of clear, a little bit of consistent damage. When he jumps in, he can proc it. And it gets damage all around. 
Greystone summons a Fury Whirlwind that deals ability damage in an area around him over the course of 5 seconds. 14, 12, 10, 8. In the early game, not too much as Dominate is laying a little bit more. He does kind of, he's, he's a little bit of a late mid game, late game scaling sort of a hero, but of course that can be changed. 14, 12, 10, 8 second cooldown, something like that. Cons it's a consistent ability. You proc it when you engage. There you go. Pretty simple. Now, because we've taken his passive, his, his passive that used to be on his E, put it into his passive, we actually have we actually have an open slot for, for an ability. Now, this might seem crazy, but it's not too bad, and it really fits his theme. And as a bruiser, we'll, he, he, uh, I would make sure that as you can see there in the stats i forgot to say it lower damage scaling lower health and armor scalings because he has his two lives you'd really have to make sure he can't do the damage of a fighter definitely not an assassin lower damage but a bruiser right does a little bit more damage than a tank but not as tanky as a tank because he's a bruiser you need some mobility or crowd control as a bruiser to make up for your lower damage stuff like that so i've put in a taunt i've put in a taunt one of the, a true taunt one of the first in the game and i'll explain how it works duel of honor graystone bashes his sword against his shield just like athena from 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 smite dealing damage and taunting the closest enemy in a small cone in front of him to attack him with their basic attacks for 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 seconds. That isn't too long. It's not too long. And it gives him just a little brief window of you're focusing me and controlling them. It's not too much. I was, I was toying with like 1.6, two seconds, but that's too long. 1.3, 1 to 1.3 seconds is fair. It's just a little bit of a... I'm, nope you're trying to get away or i know you're gonna try to use something a blink or something like that i'm gonna taunt you because i just need a few a second just need a few little bit just a little bit of time so my team can collapse stuff like that it's just one enemy the closest enemy it's only in a small cone you have to be on your target and then you can use it and I mean, somebody could body, somebody could body block against the carry, and and you taunt them instead. So it is, it's a small thing on a very long cooldown, 18, 17, 16, 15 second cooldown. You pretty much use it once in an engagement, and that is that. It's a one, basically a one time. You got to use it now to taunt somebody because. Again, your team is following up something like that. You're probably going to die in that time. Use your Reforge and have your Duel of Honor up when, you, when you're alive for your second life. It's probably something like that. But on a very long cooldown, as that is very, very powerful, a taunt. What happens in a taunt is that enemy players will automatically move towards... So you'll, you'll lose control of, of, of your character. Your character will move towards Greystone. Attack with their basic attack and look at Greystone for the entire duration. So basically, you lose control of your hero, your, the, 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 tar the taunted enemy automatically looks at Greystone, moves towards him, and attacks him with their basic. That is, that is a taunt. Just like in Smite, if you guys have played Smite, um, and have been at the Wrath of Athena, uh, you just lose your, you, you lose control of your character. Um, you can use cleanses, uh, but other otherwise, you just kind of move towards and attack um, her in, in Smite. So there it is. Duel of Honor gives him an option. A little bit of a skill cap so that you can... Aha! Right now, I need to use it because I know that, that Decker Stasis Bomb is coming. And, I, and I, need, I need them in place for that. Stuff like that. That's what that is there for. Assault the Gates, his bread and butter ability. Without this... He's just this walking guy with a shield and people just keep him at bay and CC him and just poke him down and then he's useless. Without Assault the Gates, it's, he's he's not Greystone really. This is what makes him work. Greystone leaps as far as 1200 units, dealing damage in 250 unit radius when he lands. 12 second cooldown. Part of his mobile, because he's very simple, you have to have this ability. After damaging 15 enemy heroes, or somewhere in the in the mid game, Greystone gains basic attack movement speed penalty 
for 2.5 seconds after dealing damage to enemy heroes. Basically, he gets he, he gets an amount that equals the basic attack penalty so that once you accomplish that 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 paragon when you da deal damage to enemy heroes, you now basically can attack them for two and a half seconds free of free of movement speed penalty. Makes him very much the stick to a target. If, if you hit it, people can dodge it, or you just miss, then you can stick to your target and fulfill your jump on the carry role. Basically, that's, that's it. So that is the quest mechanic for his Assault the Gates, in my opinion. Now his ultimate needs a change in my opinion it really doesn't need a change and i i personally it's my own personal idea love love this love this love this it would be the most epic thing about greystone by far when greystone dies his spirit flies into the air allowing enemies within what uh, slowing enemies within 1100 units by 35 percent for three seconds his body his, his body disintegrates or whatever but his spirit flies up his body reforms in the air from his spirit, and Greystone comes crashing down at a target location. You pick where you come down, up to 1,100 units away, dealing damage in a 250-unit radius. Enemies in the central 125-unit radius of the landing location take additional damage. So if you're able to, to aim it and land it well, because there's an animation time, there's going to be a little bit of a delay. So, I mean, it's not going to be boof. It's simple as that. If you can la really land on somebody, then you deal additional damage. Greystone receives 40% health upon landing and is not affected by Blight. That was, that was the biggest issue, uh, is that, was that A, Blight affected it, but B, you knew exactly where he was going to land. You just, you are like, okay, well, he, okay, stun him. And he just obliterated, right? Like, that can't happen. We were toying with with giving him a vulnerability for X seconds or stuff like that. Um, but then that gives you the option of, like, blinking away in that vulnerability, stuff like that. Like, doing 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 some pretty cheesy things. It kind of goes against his nature of being kind of what, what, what we've been describing him. This makes him, you know, you die... You know, you die right beside the carry. The carry, and I, I didn't put that in there, gets slowed for more. Enemies in the closer to, to, to the middle of where the Greystone die gets slowed more. And then he can choose. So if somebody like Twin Blast uses his, uses his dash to get away from the central location where you died, you still may have the opportunity to land on him if, if he chooses to do that. You know, and if he if he has a blink and he blinks away, well then he's kind of outplayed you at that point. Gives you input into his ultimate where instead it's just not a mindless thing that oh you die and you you know it's not a mindless thing you actually can control it and have input on it raising the skill potential and all that kind of stuff so what do you guys think about this i love i love this graystone the the make way is still simple but kind of need kind of needs that little bit of wave, wave clearing just consistent damage output duel of honor the potential is in, in that is fantastic. Synergizing that with the rest of your team because you're a diver, bruiser, frontliner, you know, you have less damage and less tankiness than 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 before, but you have a, just a little bit of CC, just a little bit, so that you can synergize a little bit more with, with your team. S the skill cap involved with that, like this Gideon there that you saw just teleporting away, you're like, ah, I know he's gonna teleport, taunt him. Maybe that gives enough time for your team to follow up. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Assault the gates. It says bread and butter. Bread and butter ability. You know, if you damage 15 enemy heroes, if you engage like you're supposed to, well then you get you get a reward of you know basically freely basic attacking whoever you jump on um, in in the late game, and then his ultimate. I just love that, love, 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 love that idea. It gives you input and makes it more effective, and you're just not instantaneously dead when, um, yeah, when you die and, and, and reforge. What do you guys think about Greystone? What do you guys think about my own personal idea? Please like the video, like it, to save, to save, share it with the community, guys, and of course, subscribe. If you guys want more, let me know down in the comments, and of course, hit that bell notification icon to get notified when new content comes out.
Till next time, like always, guys, stay optimistic and positive.